More than 70,000 people have been infected and more than 1,700 people have died in mainland China from the coronavirus. KRCG 13's Jessica Hart has more on what local officials are doing to prepare for a potential case. There hasn't been any confirmed cases in Missouri, but local officials are taking the possibility very seriously. I spoke with Cole County Emergency Management Director Sierra Thomas, who said she's already had four meetings with police, fire and emergency medical services about preventative measures and has been in contact with the CDC about getting new first responder packs for ambulance and police vehicles. I also spoke with the assistant director of Callaway County EMS Linda Ellis, who says their dispatch is screening calls looking for symptoms, which include a fever, cough and shortness of breath. If callers are experiencing any of these symptoms, they will then be asked these three specific questions. Have you traveled to China or outside the country within the last 14 days? Have you been in close contact with anyone who has traveled outside the country within the last 14 days? And have you been in close contact with someone who has been infected by the coronavirus? A Colombian man who spent more than a decade in prison is fighting for his freedom once again. Demetrius Woods is asking state leaders to give him clemency before the Missouri Supreme Court has the opportunity to deny him parole. Woods tells KRCG 13's Mark Slavitt sending him back to prison would be cruel and unjust. A judge sentenced Demetrius Woods to 23 years in prison for drug trafficking. In 2014, Missouri lawmakers reformed Missouri's criminal code. The changes allowed a judge to release Woods from prison in 2018. As soon as Wednesday, criminal code changes allow the Missouri Supreme Court to order Woods back to prison. Woods is asking Governor Mike Parson to pardon his sentence. Woods says he deserves freedom because he owns several Columbia businesses and works with troubled youth. I want to say thank you to all the people, all the people that listened, all of the people who went and supported me, all of the people who were at home and online. I want to say thank you from the bottom to the top of my heart. Columbia community leaders say Woods has been a model citizen since his release from prison. When he's not working, Woods spends time with his six children and one grandchild. I have with us today Mr. Demetrius Woods. Hallsville State Representative Cherie Tolson Reich introduced Woods as a special guest. Supporters and friends hand delivered a letter to the governor's office asking for clemency. He's doing good and he's reformed and you know he's just doing good. He, he's an example of what incarceration is supposed to do and that's supposed to rehabilitate people and he's showing that right now. Woods prepares for the worst and hopes for the best as he waits for the Missouri Supreme Court to make the next move. We are following breaking news of a bomb threat in downtown Jefferson City. Good afternoon, I'm Lexi Petrovich. The threat caused the courthouse and the courthouse annex to be evacuated. KRCG 13's Kyrie on Lee was on the scene. She joins us live with the latest. Yes, operations here at the courthouse are running smoothly now, but just less than an hour ago, it was a lot different, a lot more chaotic. Law enforcement were lined up on the sidewalks as Capitol Police explosive detectives dogs were in and out of the buildings. Sheriff John Wheeler says the threat was made directly to the courthouse. However, he did not specify how the threat was made. Presiding Commissioner Sam Bushman says he was called by Judge Joyce when the threat came in and he made the call to evacuate the courthouse and courthouse annex. He said as there was a grand jury and jury inside of the courthouse at the time of the threat. A sweep of both buildings has been completed and everyone has been cleared to enter. Judge Joyce is the senior judge. He called me over and she said, it's your building. What do you want to do? And I said, I think we need to evacuate. So, you know, uh, it's better to err on the side of caution. And we've got the uh, dogs from the uh, Capitol Police here. We're just checking. You know, we'll work the investigation, and then as anything that we, anything that occurs out there, we'll do an after-action report. We'll see what we did good. We'll see what we need to do better. And then we'll uh, hopefully, if when and if this situation ever occurs, we'll even be better the next time. It went superbly. I mean, everybody cooperated. Everybody did what they were supposed to do, so it was really well handled. 
This was a joint operation between the sheriff's office, the police department and Capitol Police. Sheriff Wheeler says this is an ongoing investigation and he says they still have leads to follow before they can release any more information. However, we will continue to keep you updated as we learn more.